Park Bay. More than a hundred kilometer long and 40 kilometers wide stretch of shallow warm sea between India and Sri Lanka. From coast to coast, the waters rarely run deeper than 10 meters. This large expanse of shallow sea is an ecological paradise. It supports the largest stretch of seagrass beds in India. Seagrass meadows are highly productive. Within its protected environment, sea life flourishes. For over 2,000 years, the waters surrounding this area was the center of a booming industry in pearls. Traders from around the world sailed to India in search of genuine natural pearls. But today, things are different. The Park Bay is one of South India's busiest fishing hubs. It is estimated that more than a hundred thousand tons of fish is harvested annually from this region. The local population has shifted from pearl collection and small-scale fishing to mechanized export-oriented fisheries. This change has come at a cost. Some of the modern fishing practices, like bottom trawling, have had a damaging effect on the ecosystem. Adding to the pressure is an exponential increase in the number of fishing boats. With fish catch rapidly dropping, the strain on the local fishers to sustain themselves has put them on the path of an escalating conflict. With threatened livelihoods and a dying ecosystem, Park Bay is desperately in need of a change. With a fishing history that spans hundreds of years, there is a deep pool of traditional knowledge that has been handed down through generations. For centuries, these people harvested the seas and at the same time respected it. Their practices were tuned to safeguard the fragile ecology of the bay. But even as fishing practices have inevitably moved towards mechanization, some of these people still hold on to their tradition. They may be among the last custodians of a remarkable heritage. Some of the inhabitants of the Karangad fishing hamlet come from a lineage of pearl divers. Pearl collection died out in these parts a few decades ago. But these men are here for a different purpose. They are hunting for the sacred chank. Changs are the outer shells of a large marine mollusk. Revered by many communities, and highly priced, these shells are a source of livelihood to the divers. Kuvartin and his men are free divers. They don't use any breathing aids. They dive by just holding their breath 
and are remarkably accomplished at it. It is a skill perfected since their childhood. The key to a safe dive is careful preparation. The equipment they use may be simple, yet these divers have to be meticulous. When underwater, even a small error can turn into an unpleasant accident. The waters of the Park Bay are turbid most of the year. Strong winds over the shallow waters constantly churn up particles from the sandy bottom. Visibility is poor most of the time. Finding anything under these conditions is a laborious process. In a day of diving, a single person can collect up to 20 chanks. But this is nothing compared to what it was a decade ago. Diving trips like these are useful opportunities for the fishermen to hunt, mostly for their own consumption. On an average, each dive lasts about a minute and a half. Within this really short window of time, they have to locate and capture their prey all under the physical strain of holding one's breath. By its very nature, free diving allows only for a sustainable practice. The numerous constraints, both human and environmental, limit the quantity that each person can collect. This in itself acts as a regulator to prevent over-harvesting. The life of free divers has become increasingly difficult because of the changes that have happened in these seas. Sangkuli Kamiana Karna government to Puril Kataibotanga, Naria Puril government to Taibotanga. And the Puril Kitnal, Konja Makalakunja, Pana Vodavi and Alarga. Government to Napa the Puril Kadabotra than Allah, Angapoi won Kedekilla. And the Puril Tunda Vikilana put a navy police put it to Pui, Kasapur Tunburanga, and the Tulis here. Sanka Matun, Koraba Kadakana, and Purmal Purla. A Piao and Nathalapo, Metanangala, the Kalaka and the Pomadam, Nandu in the Nandu like you. The number of free divers in the Park Bay is on the decline. They are moving on to other occupations, a mark of the changing times. Unfortunately, with them, a 2000 year old lineage of free diving may soon disappear. Susai is an 80-year-old resident of Olekuda, a small fishing hamlet in the southern tip of the Park Bay. He is one of the last remaining fishermen with the knowledge to build a traditional fish trap. In the 
அப்பா காலத்துலேருந்து நான் தான் கை கொண்டு வந்து இப்போ நான் ஒரு இருபத்தி ஏழு வருஷமாக இதை விட்டுட்டேன் This intricately designed trap has remained unchanged for hundreds of years. Pictures taken in the early 20th century show the trap to have the exact same appearance. A proof of the effectiveness of the design. Susai uses branches of acacia trees to build the trap. wood from this tree is more pliable and longer lasting odamarathirundhu kattigalai ala daake vettanum vetti adukku munnala andha aruval vechi arukana ullu illama arikkipittu adha kondu vandu vandu enna seiyanu renda odaikanu renda vechi adha tholiya urichipittu rendu naalai kaaya podanu kondu poi kadalla undu rendu naalai oora vekkanu andha adha andha oru paadiya renda kanakka adha odachi அது ஆக்க எல்லாம் ஒரு சேர்ந்தரும் கட்டியர் கட்டி போட்டுட்டு ரெண்டு நாள் செண்டு ரெண்டு கட்டு சேர்ந்தவங்க ரெண்டு நாள் செண்டு தான் உட்காந்து அந்த கூட்டை அழைக்கிறது கிரியேட்டிங் அ ட்ராப் ஃப்ரம் தீஸ் சிம்பிள் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் இஸ் த ஒர்க் ஆஃப் அ மாஸ்டர் ஆர்டிசன் மூணு வகையான கூடு இருக்கும் ரெண்டு மூ கூடு ஒன்று இருக்கும் இது ஒத்த மூ கூடு இன்னொரு பெரிய கூடுன்னு ஒன்று இருக்கும் அதெல்லாம் பெரிய மீன் வந்து கலவா தோளம் பாறை எல்லாம் உள்ளே போய் இறங்கிக்கலாம் அதுக்குள்ளே இதுக்குள்ள வந்து விலை மீன் சிறு விலை மீன் ஓரா இந்த கிளிஞ்சாங்குட்டி இது இதுக்குள்ள இந்த கூட்டுக்கள் போகும் மூணு முகம் சொல்கிறது அந்த மூணு முகத்தாலையும் மீன் போனால் நிறைய மன்னிக்கும் The waters around Olekoda are rocky with coral beds, an ideal location to deploy the traps. During the season, Susai's nephews operate the trap on a daily basis. Every trap needs a bait. To target different kinds of fish, a variety of baits are used. Finding the ideal location to place a trap is vital. A spot with low fish activity may be a waste of time. Rocky areas with many crevices are excellent locations. Surface currents are strong in these parts. To keep it from drifting, the trap needs to be locked into position. What is remarkable about these fish traps is their ability to target specific kinds of fish based on their size. Smaller fish can easily swim out of the trap and larger fish can't even enter. The ability to be selective and not be wasteful is a trait that many of the traditional fishing methods of the Park Bay share. The traps need to be checked every single day because live fish fetch a better price. At any point of time, at least 10 to 15 traps are operated to make it viable for the effort put in. With this many traps in operation, the daily catch can range anything from 5 to 10 kilos. Enough for the fishermen to eat and also sell in the local market. Craftsmen like Susai are among the last few who have the knowledge and the willingness to make these traps. But his concern are more about the dramatic changes that the bay has undergone. Kadal pura vala adanale meenu koranju vechi laanjigale eduthe steamer potu eduthe adunale meenu chedaram adukku pinnale ipo enna kaatta idu inda meen evlo vegam podo avlo vegathukku engine faanil irundha engine iraiki அந்த மீனை விரட்டி போய்க்கிற அளவுக்கு அதுவும் வந்து சேர்ந்து வருச்சு உற்பத்தி ஆகிற இனிமே வந்து எந்த நம்ம காலத்து நமக்கு காலத்துக்கு பின்னால் கறி கூட மீன் கிடைக்காது அந்த அளவில் ஆகி போயிடுச்சு இப்போ நாட்டில் கடற்கரையில்
Mural, a fish that is the all-time favorite of the people of the Park Bay. Mural is the local name for half beaks. Half beaks are surface dwelling fish. To catch mural, the tool of choice is a unique custom made net seen only in these parts of India. Mullimanai is famed for its net makers, a skill that has been handed down through generations and alive in the hands of the older women in this fishing hamlet. To fish for mural, a gill net is used. Gill nets are popular among fishers around the world, but this one comes with a difference. The key to this net is the choice of float. A float keeps the net from sinking underwater, but to be effective with mural, the net cannot just float on the surface, it needs to dynamically drift underwater. The balance has to be perfect. For generations, the net makers have been using twigs from the Calotropis plant. When dry, the twigs are thin, hollow and light. A perfect float for a mural net. Mural nets are deployed in the same way that most gill nets are, but with one difference. They do not have sinkers tied to them. A sinker holds the net down, creating a vertical wall into which fish get trapped. This won't work with mural. A drifting net is what is needed. The nets made by the women of Mullimanai are perfectly balanced to achieve this. The fishermen locate a school of mural first and then deploy the net. The effectiveness of the net is remarkable. It delivers an incredible catch time after time. When it comes to fishing, there is no one size that fits all. Fishermen understand that every fish needs to be approached differently. What is remarkable about the net makers of Mullimanai is their ability to create nets that are modifiable. With very slight changes, they can transform the same net into a versatile fishing tool. <laughs> Most of the families in Mullimanai live a precarious existence. But with their knowledge of the Park Bay and their ingenuity in net making, they can continue to enjoy their all time favorite fish, the mural. As the world around them is changing rapidly, some of the traditional fishing methods of the Park Bay have also evolved. But the danger with development is people often compromise the well-being of the environment. But some of the prawn fishers have ingeniously adopted modern techniques, but keeping in mind the fragility of the seabeds of these parts. Kollukadu is a hamlet in the northern part of the Park Bay. Puli and his family have mastered the art of catching prawns with their innovative mix of tradition and modernity. Prawn fishing is popularly done with nets used in trawl boats. But through years of experience, Puli and his people have developed an efficient way of doing this. <laughs> Mullimanai 
இந்த பெரிய கண்ணு இந்த குருவில் மாற்றவும் மலையில் நல்லா திரும்ப முடியாது அது மாட்டி உள்ளே கிடந்துக்கிறேன் அதனால அந்த மூணு கண்ணு வழியை வச்சு அதில் எழுதுகிறது Puli's son is in charge of stitching together the three nets. It is painstaking work, but the rewards are worth it. Puli's net works in the same way as trawling nets. They are both drag nets that are pulled over the ocean floor. But there is an important difference in the way it's done. Trawler nets are dragged over long distances. That's how they can harvest a sizable catch. But the traditional technique works in a smaller area. A weight is dropped as an anchor and one end of the net is tied to it. This remains the stationary end of the net. A flag is dropped to mark the anchoring point. This will be the visual reference for the fishermen as they start maneuvering the net. The boat is now moved away from the anchor point. The fishermen deploy the net as they add distance between the flag and the boat. When the full length of the net is reached, another weight is dropped. This time to sink the net. At this point, the boat changes direction and begins a circular movement, keeping the flag as the center. This is when the drag netting begins. As the boat slowly moves around the circular axis, the net begins to spread out. The major difference between this technique and trawlers is seen now. Pulley's net is carefully balanced with small weights and floats. This makes it just skim the surface of the seabed, touching it but not dragging its weight on it. The light touch of the net collects only those animals that are drifting or swimming about the seabed. Not the animals that live on the ocean floor. The beauty of this technique is seen when the nets are pulled up. The catch mostly consists of food value species. Very little goes to waste. Pulley takes pride in the fact that the net they use is far less damaging to the environment than the trawlers. If you are not going to be able to do this, you will be able to do this. If you are not going to be able to do this, you will be able to do this. If you are not going to be able to do this, you will be able to do this. If you are not going to be able to do this, you will be able to do this. If you are not கொடியகர பயஜம் விளையாடுவாங்க அவங்க இங்க கிடக்குற எல்லாமே அதுக்குள்ளே போயிட்டு இருக்கு அதனால எல்லாமே செத்துரும் இல்லவேலி நம்ம தேவபடுற மாதிரி எடுத்து தேவபடாத எல்லாம் நம்ம தள்ளிரும் சாகிறதுக்கு ஒரு சான்ஸ் பெரியமே எல்லாம் உடைச்சிட்டு போயிரும் ட்ரால் ஆஃப் ஃபிஷிங் இன் தி பார்க் பே ஹஸ் பீன் எ பாரடாக்ஸ் தட் ஹஸ் ரேஸ் ஸ்ட்ராங் வியூ பாயிண்ட்ஸ் அமங்க் இட்ஸ் ஃபிஷர்மேன் பாளை எதுக்கு கொண்டு போறானே இன்னுமே கஷ்டம் சார் நம்ம மக்கள் தொகை ரொம்ப அதிகமா பேர்ஜி அறிவலையும் கூட போயிருச்சு இதில் மாத்திரா இருந்தால் ஸ்டீம்பர் லாஞ்சிய அடியோடு நிப்பாட்டினா தான் இது வந்து மீன் பழைய காலத்துக்கு மீன் உற்பத்தி ஆகும் அ க்ரோயிங் கமர்ஷியல் டிமாண்ட் ஃபார் ஃபிஷ் இந்த ஏர்லி நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டிஸ் ட்ரிகர்ட் ஸ்கேலிங் அப் ஆஃப் ஆப்ரேஷன்ஸ் இன் இந்தியா இட் ஸ்டார்டட் வித் மெக்கனைஸ் ட்ராலர்ஸ் ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி அறுபத்தி அஞ்சுலேருந்து இதை ட்ராலிங் வந்து ஆரம்பிச்சிட்டாங்க கவர்மெண்ட் என்ன செய்யறா இது கொடுக்குறாங்க சப்சிடி கொடுத்து லோனும் கொடுத்து நீங்கள் வந்து ட்ராலிங் போங்க நல்ல முன்னேற்றம் இருக்குது அப்படின்னு சொன்னாங்க அதை வச்சு அந்த நேரத்தில் நிறைய கேச்சிங் கிடச்சிச்சு அதாவது பழைய தொழிலை விட அதை இந்த கில்நட்டு தொழிலை விட ட்ராலிங்க்கு வந்து நிறைய லாபம் கிடச்சிச்சு But within a few years of commencing operations, people began to see the damage it was causing to the fragile ecosystem of the bay. Bottom trawling has been criticized worldwide for its destructive effect on the seabed.
the Park Bay, because of its sandy, seagrass beds and shallow waters, has especially been dramatically affected. The most telling effect of bottom trawling is its wasteful bycatch. Trawler nets are non-selective. They not only sweep up commercially popular species, but also huge quantities of life forms that cannot be used as food. A place like Park Bay cannot afford such wastage of valuable biodiversity. People, including trawler owners, understand the impact of this destruction. <laughs> ஒரு கண்ட்ரோல் இருக்கணும் ஒரு ரெகுலேஷன் வச்சுருக்காங்க இத்தனை ஹெச்பி தான் வச்சு ஓட்டணுன்ட்டு இதை விட கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு பத்து மடங்கு கூடுதலாக உள்ள சக்தியை கொடுத்து படங்கள்லாம் வந்துடுச்சு அதெல்லாம் இப்படி போகணும்னா நம்ம பஸ்ஸை விட ரொம்ப வேகமாக போவோங்க மலை இழுத்துக்கிட்டு அப்போ அதுலெல்லாம் போய் அவங்களெல்லாம் அதுலெல்லாம் அரிசி எல்லாம் அரிசி சாகத்தை செய்யும் அப்போ இன்னுமே அது கொண்டு வரதெல்லாம் அவங்கெல்லாம் இல்லாமல் இருந்தால் கொண்டு வர முடியாது ஆனால் அவங்களும் இருக்க முடியாது அவங்க பத்தனை கோடி முதல் போட்டு அவங்க அதனால ஒரு ஐம்பது நூறு பேர் வாழ்றாங்க சொல்றாங்க அதெல்லாம் படவி ஒன்றுக்கு எப்படியும் ஏறக்குறைய மறைமுகமாகவும் நேரடியாகவும் ஒரு பதினஞ்சு டு இருபது பேர் இருப்பாங்க அதாவது ஐஸு அது மாதிரி கருவடை காய போகிறவங்க மீனியாக வர மாட்டுறவங்க அப்புறம் அந்த டீசலு கொடுக்குறவங்க அப்புறம் கடையில் வியாபாரம் பண்ணுறவங்க இந்த மாதிரி வகையில் நிறைய நேரடியாகவும் மறைமுகமாகவும் ஒரு இருபது இருபத்தஞ்சு பேர் கூட வரலாம் Trawling operations sustain a chain of livelihoods. Too many people have invested into it and too many families are dependent on it. Which makes it extremely difficult to just abandon trawling. With the environmental impacts of trawling being so damaging and its traditional practices slowly disappearing, the Park Bay finds itself in a crossroad. traditional fishing techniques evolved as a means of survival to the fishers of the park bay but their remarkable ability to be very specific in what they catch coupled with very little wastage makes them great role models to learn from for an ecosystem that is on the verge of collapse this kind of traditional knowledge is invaluable with an ever growing demand for fish and a simultaneous decline in wild populations integrating this knowledge into modern developments may be the way to a more sustainable livelihood in the park bay